Today we're going to look at four logical fallacies all in one section uh, because they're all ad hominem fallacies. First will be abusive, the second is circumstantial, the third is guilt by association, and the fourth is to coquet. And so let's start with the first one, abusive. And this is kind of its name calling. It is attacking the person who made the argument rather than the argument itself, and especially when it's not even relevant to the argument. And this one would be saying, uh, you know, you, a person makes an argument that it's good to to drink a glass of water every day. And then you would argue back and say, yeah, well, you, you killed people, so you're a bad guy. Therefore, it's not good to drink a glass of water every day. That would be uh, an abusive ad hominem. It's attacking the person's character or them. Now, that's different than a circumstantial. Circumstantial ad hominem is questioning the motives. And this would be something like uh, saying, well, of course you want that because you're in that industry. So, of course, you want that law to be passed or not passed or whatever. And, and that can, in fact, be true. However, it is not necessarily true just because the person has that, that interest. And so here's a common example of that would be a salesman saying, oh, this is a great car. It's really comfortable and it, it'll, you know, has a reputation for getting a lot of miles before it breaks down. And then the person would object and say, well, you're just saying that because you want to make money selling it. Well, yeah, but the salesman wants to make money selling it, but that isn't proof that what he's saying is incorrect. Um, perhaps it's a little bit of a flag to just, yeah, okay, I'm going to keep this in mind, but that would be a circumstantial ad hominem. The third kind is guilt by association. And that's saying that, uh, you know, because you are associated with another person who believes in something or with a group of people that believe in something, therefore you are uh, also like that group in every way, and therefore your argument is not true. So if we took something like a uh, the minister whose church was burned down in Texas, uh, David Koresh, I think his name was, and if we said, well, he had this wild, crazy hair, and he had a lot of wives, and that's crazy, he says that uh, when it's really hot outside, he likes to be in the shade. You're saying that you want to be in the shade. You're just like that guy because you also have long, crazy hair. Well, that's a ridiculous argument. That's That just doesn't make any sense. This is the fourth, and by the way, I suggest that you look up all four of these and get more examples of them. It'll help you identify them in, in daily life. And this is the, the U2 fallacy. It's the ad hominem to quake. And this is by saying that the person who is making the argument is not living by what they say, Therefore, what they say is not true. <clears throat> a big example of this would be a personal trainer who weighs 500 pounds. And the personal trainer says, hey, you need to drink a lot of water every day. You need to exercise for at least 20 minutes. You need to eat a balanced, low-calorie diet. Uh, and then the personal trainer goes out and just eats horribly and doesn't exercise and doesn't drink water. That, if you said to that person... Your argument that you need to eat eat healthily and exercise and drink water, uh, that argument's no good because you don't follow it. Well, that's a fallacy. The argument is still, perhaps, very good. Perhaps it's not. But this is the ad hominem to quake. So those are the four ad hominem fallacies. Get familiar with those. Look them up. Again, there's abusive, circumstantial, guilt by association, and two quake. Thank you.